innovative. Shout out to that Mandarin. That shit was juicy as hell. That was a juicy old Mandarin. And also, my name is Taylor Lindsay. I go by the plug. I'm also the owner and operator of the plant plug. I have my own nursery. I always know a guy if you need something. Actually, I am that guy. And also, I have my own podcast, if you don't already know. And also, welcome to the show. We're on season three, everybody. <laughs> yes, we made it to season three. Season three in less than two years. If you want to do it, you can do it and make it happen. <sighs> Let us pause. So, I have a guest today, and actually it's her first time. She's gonna do great, everybody. And I have Tamara here, Tamara Jones. I know that's not your last name. You just look like you got, you know, the Jones, love Jones is giving the vibe. And uh, she is an apothecary worker. She is a caregiver of every single variety. And also, uh, she knows about food safety, which we're gonna talk about in a second. A oh, quick second, we gotta talk about that, please. It's very important. And uh, you, do you breed horses? We don't breed horses. Okay, we're not there yet. I'm skipping no, steps. Okay, no. uh, ride horses, full on equestrian, and Easy E, tell them where you're from. I am from Compton, California. Let's go, you got the <laughs> lie, let's go, you're hired. Yeah, she's from Compton, California. And yes. uh, I just wanna thank you for being on the show. I thank really you appreciate you know coming into the um, care and hands of Innovative Culture. The Plant Plug is officially a part of the Innovative Culture family. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to Innovative Culture. And uh, you know being here for our very first episode of season three. So yes. uh, let's just get right into it. Tell everybody, from one perspective, okay, one hat at a time. I know we're all wearing five hats. Capitalism is a thing, the bills need to be paid. We are monetizing hobbies, which I 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Five thumbs down on Yelp. Do not, I know you gotta pay the bills, but monetizing your hobbies is rough, boy. But let's start Tell with one it. thing at a time. I really wanna get into what's really important to me is the agriculture and the renaissance and revival. What you're doing, you and your family are doing that on your own in Compton. Because my mom's from Compton, but Compton has a terrible rap even to this day. So how did you start? Where did you start? I know you were born, you drove here. Okay, so <laughs> I grew up Compton Paramount. Um, I always grew food as a kid, always was around animals. When I lived in Compton as a kid, we had horses in the backyard. That's my first introduction to horses, period. Wow. And when the cowboys would ride, I would cull them down on the horses, and that's how I start riding. Cull? Culture. Oh, what like, is that? No, when we start writing them down. Can you describe that? That yeah. was just horrible. Yeah, what is cul <laughs> what is, what is, is it culture? So when the cowboys, they ride the horses, yes. and then they have a particular gait. And then when I was younger, I used to ride them down. So after oh. horses run for a long time, they need to be rolled down, like riding slowly. Okay, first of all, when I was a kid, black people did not ride horses. We got chased by them. <laughs> That's all I remember. And the fact that you have this, occult, uh, this, this equestrian culture that you were raised with mm -hmm. in Compton, which we never saw. We never saw. Like, technically, my mini farm is on the most dangerous corner, dubbed 1992, the most dangerous corner in the world, Normandy and Florence. That's oh, where yeah. I have chickens at a farm. So you're telling me in the meantime, in between time, you're over here carrying, culling, riding down horses. Mm -hmm. You're saying terms that I don't even understand, but I'm so intrigued. So how has that, um, you would say, in your formative years, played into your adult? Did it make you more responsible, like, uh, more inquisitive, like... Um, I always knew I had a connection to nature, connection to animals, like I'm an animal person through and through. Like, shout out to other people that love animals because it's hard work. It's a lot of work and we wear, we do it with our hearts. So yeah. people who actually care, who take care of their, their animals and try to do their due diligence. It's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. It, my hat goes off to you because I, you. I saw those horses. They're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> And um, I, uh, I dare ride one one day. I know you told me to. And I was like, well, <clears throat> um, 
I've ridden a couple things in my day, but I don't know if the horse is going to be one of them, and not today, maybe later. But you were so kind with it. You literally told me, you know, we'll we'll be here when you're ready. Yeah. So they're empathetic, empathetic creatures. Okay. And um, sometimes they will mimic your behavior, or they try to challenge it. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. So wow. they're amazing animals. And they'll, they'll, they'll chomp a carrot. Those carrots went fast. I didn't get to look at that carrot, and that carrot, that horse already. And that horse's hair was laid, boy, let me tell you. My goodness, no yakky <laughs> lace fronts for that horse. <laughs> that horse's hair was laid. So you still have access to horses, and you're, on, you're currently on a farm? Do you yeah. live on a farm? Do you cultivate? So we rent on a farm. Okay. Yeah. And that's been an awesome experience. In Compton. Um, in Compton, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. People forget that Compton's a suburb. Mm-hmm. Compton is technically a suburb. Like, you go out there, houses, one story, there's not high rises, there's no luxury apartments. I know about Dominguez Hills. That's a little bit different. Oh, that's a whole different zip code and everything. Right, yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's just it's just absolutely gorgeous, and um, I've had the pleasure of visiting there. And also, you know, the plant plug lives to teach the children. Yes. And you actually gave me a great opportunity to do so. I had the pleasure of teaching gardening, introductory gardening, mm-hmm. with the Compton, the young equestrians. So Compton Junior Equestrians. Junior Equestrians, there it is. Yes. So um, working with that group of people has been amazing and teaching the kids and being able to expose the kids to other entrepreneurs, plant plant entrepreneurs. Yeah, like, plantpreneurs. That's what we're yes. saying. Now we're putting on a shirt. I'm yes. a trademark it. Don't do that. I'll sue you. I'm coming. Oh, let me just say this. Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. She started, people. Uh, She's you, already you, you look, fired look her what up. You did. Look just what like you there. did. <laughs> no, because on everything. I I it took me two and a half years to get the plant plug trademarked. I I was trying to be nice. If I see any more plant plugs come up, you're not gonna get a message from me. <clears throat> I'm not threatening anybody on here because threatening people in California is illegal. You've you can get more. sued for that, but I'm just letting you know. Please stop. I'm gonna have Birdman and his people come up in here and ask, are you guys finished or are you done? Mm-hmm. All three of y'all. All three of y'all need to put some respect on that name. And that includes the names of other small businesses because people have so much ingenuity and are so imaginative and creative, but people don't have the same respect for small business as they do large business. They won't come from McDonald's, but they'll come from the plant plug which I don't understand, but I think I do understand. I'm just not that person, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just putting that out there. Yes, yeah, so I'm watching you, please. I already got 13 saved in my phone. Mm. I have 13 different plant plugs saved in my phone, and none of them do what I do. So I'm just putting it out there. You can't call yourself a plug and not be a plug, by the way. Unless you're the DWP, you can't call yourself a plug because you ain't giving, you know, you're not giving nothing. Um, but uh, so my understanding also is that, so you do apothecary work as well. I dry some herbs here. You, you need yeah. to stop. I'm sorry. I appreciate the modesty. Absolutely not. Not here. You are on the platform. You are on the Plant Plug podcast. We are completely, I was going to say completely illiterate. We're not illiterate on this podcast. We are We are completely just on, on, on everything. This is the Plant Plug podcast platform. You better shout at the top of the hills that you got it all going on. You got it going on and you're doing so well and you're doing so many things. And also you brought me something. I love a gift. Can we open it? She's talking about I dry some herbs. Give, give me yes. this bag. Thank you. <laughs> Give me this bag. She's dry some herbs. And also, she has her own business called Harmony House. Mm-hmm. With these, these dried herbs, apparently. Mm-hmm. And then she makes her own candles, and they are sacred. Oh, my God. You better, you better get out of here with that. See, this is a good candle. I'm not even going to burn it. And you have a wood wick in it? Mm-hmm. It's look 100% beeswax, too. And it's beeswax? Yeah, 100%. And look at how you just laid the, the lavender. This is phenomenal. So you Pass that around. Let can- everybody get a whiff. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. She's like, I, I dry some herbs. I dry them. I cure them. I put them in a candle. I, I put I put amazing energy to it. I make it a metaphysic practice. Come on, you better come on with the talents. You don't just make a candle. <laughs> this is not Bed Bath and in 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 beyond no. bare minimum. So, this is the real deal. Okay, come on. So I grow come herbs on. and then, then I, on, I create salt. my own products like bath salts. Wow. And then I use the herbs that I grow in my candles as well. What kind of flower is this? So there is wow. lemongrass. Ooh. Um, since, uh, Pass that around too. We love a bath salt for the bath. 
Okay, so there's lemongrass, rose petals, um, um, calendula, um, pink and Himalayan, Himalayan salt, and Epsom salt, um, and as well as lavender that I grew at my home. So you yeah. homegrown, handmade. Yeah. Harmony House. Yeah. Let's go. Do you have a website, by the way? No. Okay. No. But you are on Instagram? I'm on Instagram. You are on Instagram? Yeah. What, are you doing pop-ups, or do you get more traction with that? Yeah. So before having my, my third child, I was doing pop-ups, and then... Third child? Yeah, I have three children. <laughs> three girls. Oh, three girls, the babies! Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm a mom of three. Wow, the babies! Yes. Oh, we love a mom of three. Go ahead. We love a mom yeah. of one, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that. I love the mamas. And, yeah. you know, being a mom and trying to have, well, having a organic lifestyle, trying to grow my own food and make my own products, my own herbs, my own sauce, my own um, pickling, homesteading. Um, they love it. They love your salt. We over here smelling your salts in the back. <laughs> Woo! Get it going, right? Yeah, I know. We want to basket it, you know. Yeah. Over here smelling your salts. Go ahead. I, I just let you know what's going on in the back. Definitely. We over here just huffing these salts, not like huffing, huffing, but getting a good whiff. They're the good right. kind of bath salts, by right. the way, I, not I, I the. Um, okay, I just want to say, you know, yeah. we are on the plug pa- I, yeah, podcast. We are so on the plant plug they're podcast. They're the good kind with um, natural, natural ingredients. ingredients. Yes. They won't um, have you running down the street butt naked <coughs> and blood calling the cops <coughs> on yourself because you just stole your mom's car. Yes. They will have you, um, you know, relax. Mm-hmm. Yes, we, we, I have I have a lot of disclaimers pro, pre-programmed. <laughs> I have a financial disclaimer. I have a medical disclaimer. I haven't busted it out yet because um, we haven't gotten to that point. But I've almost lost my account on Instagram multiple times because I keep getting hit for illegal drug sales. So I, I don't sell drugs. Um, we live in California. Right. Chill and also, uh, calm down, Instagram. That's calm down why Instagram, we right. don't even want to use your platform, but we're going to use it until we, you know, yeah. we pass there. Speaking of platforms, um, <laughs> so we're going to parlay right into another platform, which is, uh, which is actually really imperative to everything you do, uh, safety. So safety. W- especially with the, uh, the junior Christians, they are booted and suited. They have their little helmets on. It's the cutest thing. First of all, like I, I, I've been doing a lot of shadow work, inner child work, right? And I, whenever I do my inner child work, I think I pinpoint certain moments and activities to what age I was specifically. Mm-hmm. Six-year-old Taylor would have lost it if she saw little black girls running around with knee-high boots, hopping on horses with those big old helmets that look like turtle shells from Mario. It's important. Safety first, right? So yeah. I, and then you're introducing them to gardening, ways of life. I remember the kids were trying to haggle compost with me and barter compost with me. Like, so how much money can I get with this compost? Like, they were I still, them well. there was still, I there was definitely well. a kid there, a 12 year old. So he's like, so tell me how yeah. much can I make? Off? Like, this kid is literally mm-hmm. planning to do dirt at 12 years old, but he's going to sell good dirt. Like, it, the seed has yes. been definitely planted. So safety first. As far as the kids hopping, you know, hopping on the horses and take, and, you know, horse riding can be very dangerous, by the way, but it's Definitely. just so enthralling to see that, like that, that kind of exposure. It just literally took me back to my childhood, just seeing how important that is to have it without consequence. Like you were so programmed and indoctrinated to where when we see nice things, especially as children's color, we're told not to touch it. Mm. It's not for you. It's for display only. Actually, it's a privilege that you were here, even though your parents had to pay fifteen dollars for you to get on the bus. Fifteen dollars is a lot in nineteen ninety two, by the way. Mm-hmm. It ain't nothing now. You get two nickels of gas. But um, with your products, you take so much care and pride in uh, not only curating, cur- curating, sorry, curating them, curating them, but also just designing them well, making sure you hit, you know, check every box uh, with the packaging, and also you process that with people. But also when it comes to food safety. And yes. things like that. It's just it's been it's become such an issue, and especially since we do produce giveaways. And me, I don't personally sell fruit and vegetables yet because of I want to make sure that we're going in everything clean, everything right, and that's a big big deal for me. So uh, I'm trying to do a segue from this, and I am failing. I, I want you to catch the layup, mm-hmm. and you have it. Oh, you want me to just go right in? <laughs> or like <laughs> I don't want to. I'm sorry. I was talk about the sauce. Talk about the sauce. Oh, there's no label on that one. Oh. Get the sauce, get the sauce. There get it is, the sorry. Sauce. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, like, we were trying to talk about food I, that's safety. Why I, I'm, I'm sorry, I brought a bunch of hot sauce <laughs> bottles with no labels on them. Okay, anyways. That's so why I was we trying have to plug turn sauce. it. But it's okay. Okay, so I have plug sauce. 
Yes. Yes. And have you had the pleasure of trying it yet? No, I would love to. Okay, this is yours. There you go. Feed the farm. Feed the children. There it is. It's all yours, everybody. Yes, Get I your can't plug wait. Yes. Yeah, so that is uh, also because you guys hot sauce. You guys inspire me. You guys inspire me to keep the farm going. You guys inspire me to have a, a community and a family going. I love connecting to the children, and also uh, everything you have going on from the young, uh, from the junior equestrians to um, let's see, to Harmony House. And you have connections to the Collective Healing Garden? No. Well, technically, because I work with Holistic Divine Innovation. That's what it is. Oh, I couldn't so, say that. I'm sorry. It's a mouthful. Shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to them. Um, they got their funding. Yes. So uh, we love securing funding. Yes. We love securing capital. We are creating a herbal zen garden on the side of the community garden. Okay. And I'm so proud of Holistic Divine Innovations. Shout out to Tyler. He's... Um, the person who had the dream and, and he told us about how we can you know let's do this he's from compton by the way oh he's from compton we went too. to school together okay everybody's from compton <laughs> every every farmer i have come across in my recent days <laughs> like i didn't know how hood prosperity market was until i got there yes because everybody's from compton we represent the, co- the then, culture very so well you're from compton i'm from compton tyler's from compton tyler's from compton um uh timu brian's from compton brian's from compton brian's from compton yes and i went to school with all of them brian i know she told me okay her episode if anybody hasn't seen it it's i've uh, seen it two. and it was a Amazing. Her episode is incredible. Her I if, man. Love I was kicking in my chair yeah, watching her it. I was like, oh my god, it's so incredible. good. And see, and we all talk about each other and we all plug each other. It is not as amazing it's not grower, amazing not, mother. Yes. She's amazing. I've known her for years. Five I'm boys. So ha- you got three yes. girls, she's got five boys. I'm like, what's Let's just, go. Y'all fertile. We, <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Sorry. sorry <laughs> we love growing things Girl, on the Plant yes. Podcast. My plants are fertile. My yeah, body's yeah, yeah, fertile. We love it. We it's love okay. it. And we, you know, okay. <laughs> so th- you know, this is the thing. And we're just gonna get into a little bit of controversy real quick. And controversy is not about being hood. Controversy is not about being from Compton. The controversy is this pink sauce. Okay, so I not to be confused with it. the plug sauce. So I understand there's a lot of peas going on because we pushing peas, all peas. The Plant Plug Podcast okay. is the, the platform that makes it possible. I understand that. Get your but sauce, this, this sauce, this sauce is it's actually seasonal. So this sauce is seasonal. Taylor, tell us what's in the sauce. Okay, can we can we know? Can we just get a little bit of what's in the sure. sauce? Sure. So share the sauce. So I work with a silent partner who I'm really really grateful for, and we came up with this sauce. It's called Summer Siesta. So. Every sauce I have only stays on the shelves for three months, not because it's about to go bad and there's no preservatives in it. It's because we're the only country, the United States of America, that doesn't eat seasonally. So True. we are accustomed to going into grocery stores and every bit of produce is exactly the same year round. And it's not supposed in to be. the so nutritional value is so low. depleted because it's actually a five-step process from farm to table. And also growing has a big thing to do with how nutrient-dense things are. And then that means it gets stepped on. As a plug... I don't like my shit stepped on. We want things right? to be eaten So food fresh. included, right? Yes. So with that being said and that being known, what's really going to save us economically, environmentally, and emotionally is local. Being local, growing local, buying local. And, and also that combats inflation in the long run. Yes. So when it came to the plug sauce, the only reason why it's only on the shelf for three months is because summer is the shortest season of the year. Mm-hmm. So it's a summer sauce based on summer ingredients. So I grow the habaneros. It's grilled pineapple and it's beets. And the heat is sweet and it's just long enough so you get a little zap, a little zing, and then you can move on. Because I don't like to be burning. Wait, who's sh- No, that was Adios' show. Okay, you know what? There's a video floating around and we have not been able to find it. Shout out to Adios, the plant-based player. Um, this nice, is, this is, nice. Come on, let's go. Vegan yes. in the hood, in the hood, right? So, oh, you're, yeah, you are vegan. Uh, plant-based, yes. Plant-based. plant-based centric, yes. Okay. Um, about, yeah, like 90%, 80%. Let's say seventy percent plant based now. I because tried I've been going it. Back and didn't forth. work I changed for it in twenty twenty. Um, it it went to eating eggs me. and animal products. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing it a lot more this year because it's stress. But plant based centric, I like to say, it's more flexible than the term vegan. Yeah. Um, so I, t- I teeter on pescatarian, um, fasting, intermittent I, fasting. I appreciate fasting now more. I love yeah. it, and I gr- a girl loves some chlorophyll. Yes. I do love some chlorophyll. I take capsules. It's chlorophyll amazing. girl. Um, so. Uh, there's a video of me floating around. I went to his show for 420. There was a hot chip challenge, and nobody would take it. Nobody was going to do it. Oh, my goodness. Nobody would mess with this challenge. And I'm waiting because they had, they had about like $100 plus worth of prizes. And I'm thinking, why not? 
So I'm just sitting there like an hour. Then an hour and a half passes. And it was cool because he put me on. He was the first person that let me sponsor his show. I've never been a sponsor. Like, to me, success is scaling up. It's when I can support other people's endeavors, not just be like me, 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 me. Success is hiring outward. Success is, to me, like, it, bigger doesn't have to be better. Better for me is being able to stay scale outward, right? So I sponsored, I helped sponsor his show, and he takes care of everybody there. That's like, whenever amazing. you, he, he gives you VIP bands. He, it's not, it's not out of entitlement because he can. Because I can, I will, right? So I go That's and very I step true. It, you're right? Like, you're so giving. Oh, thank you. So oh, girl, it's hard. It, it's, it's hard. But it's amazing thank you. because I showing up for it. your community is so important nowadays. It is. Because it, we all have purposes that we want to help people, but we also want to sustain our lives. Like small businesses, we matter. We need yes. to sustain ourselves. There's a, there's a, there's so much out there. It is it is it's absolutely incredible. And I just dig for it. I love meeting people where they're at, especially in the beginning of their careers. Definitely. Um, so back to this video, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm at his show, and he was the headliner. So I had to wait all night for him to get there. I mean, get, get on stage. He's at the show, but he hasn't performed yet. And uh, his stuff goes hard. He, he raps about butter squash and all that. I'm not making this up, but it's not a, it's not a gimmick. He really means what he says. So I, I'm like, okay, I'll do the hot chip challenge. They called the ambulance. And that video is floating around. <laughs> the security guard from Los Globos has it. And if... There was a Jamaican security guard there. He came out. He's like, what go on? And I'm on the floor rolling oh, and I crying and throwing up. And uh, he's like, Give, what did she take? He thought, he, thought I took t- he thought I took drugs. And they're like, no, That's she had the hot chip challenge. So there. what happened was I didn't eat anything before I did the challenge. So mm. my body's like, get this out of you now. So I was throwing up kidneys. I was throwing up gallstones I didn't even have. My intestines, everything was just coming out, and my body was ca- like clinging, like my stomach was clinging to my ribs. So you did a detox, ribs. a pepper ch- Apparently, detox. Apparently, who needs duck flour when you can do a hot chip <laughs> challenge, right? By the way, you guys, if you guys are doing duck flour, you want to make sure it's from a legit source because there's a lot of fake duck flour out there, and also it is a very extreme detox. People, yeah. these detoxes, stu- like, this stuff is dead serious. Um, please so, talk so to a real herbalist, people. It's there's very a video. important. Yeah, there's a video out there of me throwing up and rolling all over the floor, crying, saying, I'm sorry, Mom, I'll never do this again. And it, it was bad, the hot chip challenge. So this is like, this is really like a temporary heat. That hot chip challenge stayed with me for about three hours. I like it <laughs> spicy. Okay. So I'm, yeah. So I'm that excited. one's good. It, it, that one's pretty good. But yeah. back to this pink sauce. So black Twitter has been blowing up with this pink sauce. If you guys are not aware of pink sauces, and if you're not on TikTok, I highly suggest you know TikTok is very educational. You definitely want to do your research on where your stuff's coming from. But there is a person that is selling sauces without preservatives that is a dairy-based sauce. And the issue with that is that mm. what I try to teach and I try to put forward when talking to people about food safety is expiration dates. They're not just there. They are, some things are on there for a reason, but some things are, are need to be on there. Yes. Any type of dairy, meat, meat's already died as it is. Food's already going bad once it's getting to the store. It's already going bad. It, mm. it, it, it starts to die as soon as you chop it up, as soon as you, you transport it. Exactly. But this pink sauce in particular is being shipped without any preservatives, and it is making hundreds of people sick. Food poisoning is absolutely no joke. The plug sauce does not have that problem. You can get some plug sauce from me. I'll get to do a slide in my DMs. And also, um, yeah, so I just really want to talk to people about how important and imperative food safety is to our health and well-being. And also, that's why it's important to buy local. Because if I'm buying this, uh, if I'm buying it directly from the person that has produced it, my chances of getting sick from things going bad is cut by like 80% compared to if I get something on the, from the grocery store or if I get it shipped, especially food products. Definitely. Especially, especially food products. Uh, but you know what? Please, please be careful. And also, I highly do not recommend people buying stuff off of TikTok. Can we also say that when you buy your food and it's exploded, that yeah. means those gases are, are releasing, releasing popping off. and then creating bacteria? Right. Um, oh, please refrigerate your sauce. Everybody, please refrigerate your sauce. And also, there's, there is pressure in here. Pop it open. They're like beer bottles. Can I also say how it's reusable oh, too? Oh yeah, because we're this very sustainable is in here. Sustainable we're bottles. sustainable. Um, yeah, we're all I mean, about being sustainable. Like we're not perfect. Like come on now, composting every single day of your life is right. intense. If you think about it, humans are solar powered. Yeah, we are. We're solar powered, especially in our melanin. Yeah, we're Definitely. solar powered people. So, you know, imagine if I made this with solar power. It's possible. You know, you can buy a solar generator on. Uh, Amazon, but we're no. cooking. Mm. We are cooking. 
So, yes. you know, when it comes to anything as far as urban farming goes, I feel as if just like with organic anything, people think it's really expensive due to the greenwashing effect. If people are not aware of greenwashing, I think my, my chair has slowly fallen down, but uh, due to the greenwashing effect, people think that things are expensive and very, very, very unavailable. So can you talk a little bit more about your experience with the urban farming? And also what's really more important is since we're in a concrete jungle, you know, how much space are you working with? I actually have never measured my space. I have four raised beds, okay. one hydroponic tower, um, multiple, a plethora of um, custom builds. I saw what your dad built back there. No, not my dad. That wasn't your dad? No, my dad didn't build it. He that, that thing? Which one? The, the, the thing with the thing. Just go ahead. I don't want to get distracted. Oh, okay. So, um, concrete uh, jungle. Yes. <laughs> How much space are you working with? Well, you got the giggles. I didn't do nothing. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, stopped, I forgot what I was going to no, say. No, it's okay. But so, how yeah. much space are you working with in urban farming? Have you, have you ran into anything, like any type of major setbacks? Or anything Definitely. That, or, or any advice for anybody that, that wants to get started. Um, I tell people if you don't have the space, start some seeds, grow the house, stuff so in your house. So there's and then multiple ways to grow if you don't have absolutely no space. Uh -huh. I, I've been, you know, we live in California, so we've been, you know, a culture of generation of hopping table to table, you know, couch to couch, room to room. So right. I understand how people will be. Um, skeptical of growing plants if you're doing that but just keep just please keep going because yeah. security is really um scary nowadays i Food lived in Compton very, and it, it, yeah our 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 shelves were were stripped bare like yeah. during the pandemic we saw how bad it yeah. could get and the thing about it is that even though the streets are open it could still get that bad if it's not getting that bad i i go to Nia's sister all the time like i love feeling like a baller birdman hands i go straight twenty dollars a dub in the 99 sister with a buy 25 get five off coupon lady get out of my way sir get out of my way this is you my store up. for one hour right definitely so i go in there up. and the, the stores the shelves were bare mm -hmm. they were barren and then I, I have a lot of clients in other parts of, of la county and i would go to like not really brentwood but the nearby areas those shelves are empty it's because of our dependence on everything and it only took the food industry 40 years that's not that long i'm about to be 40 in less than five Where? years, I'm going to be 40. I'll shut up. In less than five years, I'm going to be 40 years old, okay? So it only took that long to have people completely removed to knowing where their food comes from, and even more importantly, stop questioning it. Mm -hmm. You know, taking away knowledge in that in, and, and shaming people for wanting to learn is the fastest way to disenfranchise any group of people. Make learning boring. But that's why yeah. we're here. That's yeah, why we're I here. I try not to be boring when I'm teaching That's why my we're kids. Here. It's, That's it's why we're here. Making it interesting, making it fun, um, teaching them how to do for self, you know. And I teach uh, adults. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, I used to think a certain age group was harder than the other. No, it's not. It's just that it was, it was a challenge for me. So they weren't difficult. I just had to get over the challenge and then learn how to approach that, which yes. is different. Because a lot of people give up. Um, speaking of giving up, we're... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. so i see what you got there in your hand go ahead yeah, i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yes i'm sorry the, I, I, <laughs> things have been a little difficult lately but uh, my car almost, it didn't ex almost explode yesterday i'm sorry yeah i was just in the i was in looney tune lands have you seen the wily coyote rocks and all that i was i was <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. I was stranded out there yesterday for five hours. Oh, my goodness. And I was just like, speaking of giving up because, damn, you know what? They just keep piling up. And you're like, you know what? I don't want to find out what my last straw is. I really keep don't. Going. I do not want to find out. The you universe guys, has a funny up, sense of humor. What's, okay. what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Curveball. Like, it's okay. Why? Oh. Okay. So you yeah, I, I know you okay. I know you're an apothecary. If people are not familiar with apothecary, it's people that use herbs as medicine. And also, mm -hmm. when looking at the pharmacy, it turns out the that symbol that we saw with the snake wrapped around the kundalini. Yes. Yeah. So that was the, those were the tools that they used to make medicine. And also, mm -hmm. it's still a popular practice today, but it's so it synonymous is. with like dark magic and herb work and it's evil Root and hoodoo and, and we talked scary. about this before and mm -hmm. people need to stop with that but it turns out i brought a plant for you and it's not in this book really you sure citronella is not in this book 
Um, that's uh, so I grew the citronella. This is citronella, everybody. It's one of my favorite plants. Citronella is and it's absolutely a amazing. particular scent. Citronella can be lemongrass too. It can be. Um, it's great for clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, aromatherapy is one of the lesser used practices. It's, amazing. it's so different it can types. Bring you it's back amazing. to the center and also pass that around too. We are yes. passing it around the plant. We, plug. we are have... very giving people the plant plug. Even though the plant plug is one person, yes. we are very giving people. Yes. Let's so that talk is about so just it brings you back to the center. I'm not making this up. Yeah. When I'm on the screen, because I'll be on five different platforms at once, and my brain's going oogly googly, and my eyes are falling out of my mouth, I squeeze a bit of that citronella because the, the, the property of the aromatherapy is clarity. Mm. So it brings me right back to the center. And if anybody smells that, it smells really familiar. Yes! It helps with bugs and yes. mosquitoes. Definitely. And also, it's what they put in pine saw. Can I also plug in that I make a citronella candle? You do? Because, um... If it, this is a place to plug. <laughs> if you're not plugging, you're not on the Plug 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 Plug. You're so, not on the Plug Plug Podcast. Good so gravy. the story behind my citronella candle is because I live on an area that has heavy bug presence. And it's oh, no Don't get me on joke. starting the bugs. Yes, yes. Because living on a farm with all kind of animals... Do not smoke it! I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do not smoke the citronella. Do not smoke it. It is. The, I am sorry. Who's smoking it? No. Yo, so I'm, I, I'm sorry to interrupt okay. you. Oh God, I'll get back to you. No. You know, I'm gonna forget what I right. was talking about. No, we're gonna go back to one. No, because we're gonna talk about your citronella candles. I didn't yes. forget, girl. I have a plan. If I, if, if I, if I, that's for you. That's for oh, you. Yeah. I love giving bouquets Ooh. of herbs. No, but the thing yes. about it is, we're gonna talk about your citronella candles. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, if I'm gonna interject, it's just I just I just need people to know that yes, please do not smoke anything I give you. Like not like on the show, <laughs> on the show. Like okay, I just need to clarify. Like but a lot of herbs are smokable, but some you should not. If even... you need to know a list of herbs that are smokable, <laughs> thank you. I will let you know. <laughs> Because that's one thing that I'm researching and growing <laughs> for, for people who, because it's a thing right now, yeah. smoking herbs and lacing, you know, your little MJs, you know. With a little bit of lavender and well, stuff. Yes. But if, if citronella in, in long is smokable, please let me know. I love to be educated. I'm okay with being wrong because it's an opportunity I to learn. I would then we need, not smoke citronella. I would, that's what I'm saying. Because it's, I would believe that it's harsh on the lungs. And right. I, 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 I was looking up the citronella essence for a long time now. And the, some, some so oils actually it, do leave um, a residue too mm -hmm, as well. It's so. not good for your lungs if you keep right. inhaling it on a a long basis, regular basis they yeah. actually warn you on certain herbs about that well so uh i i do understand we have citronella candles available yes i, I, do. I need your citronella candle and also the plant plug does source to the apothecary workers so if you need a okay. bag i got you when it comes to herbs and i'm also nice. growing toothache me too oh you're growing I toothache yes oh my gosh so um i try to grow things for the kids that they will find interesting and having a kid try a leaf yeah it, it's so exciting i have it's um, exciting and it's funny as hell and my kids are still talking about it right. to this day i have one that was like i don't know if i can trust your food because you want me to try crazy stuff and that will make me drool oh, oh yeah because toothache yeah so the, the, it was it's like, called toothache yeah, plant but it's, so it's a little fuzzy it's like plant experience. for anybody that doesn't know mm -hmm. and you grab that little fuzzy plant and you could rub it on your gums mm -hmm. and it'll go numb yeah so you guys need to change your sources for gum numbing. Okay, we got a healthy source for you. There's an herb for everything. It's an herb for gum numbing. Yes. So let's just uh. say um, health in general was hijacked. And, yeah, it, um, it definitely was. It's an herb for everything. It definitely is. Oh, here comes and the disclaimer. Let's get into On it. On the Plant Plug Podcast, I, Taylor Lindsay, is not a medical professional. Everything we do say is for entertainment purposes only. If you do choose to partake in anything that we do talk about, it is up to you on your own discretion. Please check with your GP or your general physician. GP is for if you're British. If you do take anything, we are not liable for that. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I'm not trying to get sued. I I ain't mad. Because they're gonna be like, I was smoking toothache and drinking pine salt because I listened to the Plant Plug podcast, and now I got citronella suppositories, and now I'm dying. My organs are failing. <laughs> See, and I, they'll make me responsible for that. <laughs> well, you, you you yes. Why not? I totally understand. We have no. to make that disclaimer yeah, just please. because people have no a lack of common sense. That's I had a pharmacist it. on my show once, and mm -hmm. uh, I was doing the disclaimer, and she cut me off. She's like, actually, I am a medical professional. I'm like, I'm sorry. I forgot, <laughs> but she was so great. Amazing. Um, she, yeah, she was amazing because it's, 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 it's so really needed. important that mm -hmm. people are very aware. Of their well, health. not hyper-aware, yeah. but also um, examine.com is one of my favorite resources because I sold vitamins for six years and herbs for six years. 
So examine.com is the only website that I've seen that is 100% unbiased, no corporate control, no paid ads or reviews when it comes to vitamins and supplements. And that's really important because it is not FDA regulated in this country. A lot of our herbs that are on sale are banned in the UK, in uh, Canada, and uh, Brazil is not banned, but it's really expensive. Yeah, wow. it's crazy. So I do have a herb for you. It just landed on this page. Oh, um, this is the Encyclopedia of Magic Herbs, and I highly suggest anybody get a copy of this. Um, I do have it uh, on my. I don't have it on my website, but I'll have it on the description box in YouTube. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. It's clove. So people do smoke cloves. You can smoke cloves. I'm not suggesting you smoke Red cloves. Red cloves. You can smoke cloves. There's and, different uh, kinds too. Its folk names it's are Maquette um, and Carafil. Oh, you, are you growing clove? No, but it's. You can forge clothes. Oh, and another thing. Do you judge people when you see them smoke clothes? Like, I'm going to watch out for him. I actually don't know a lot of people who, who smoke, smoke them. a lot yeah, of I used to judge herbs. people. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from him. Like, I... <laughs> no. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. Okay. So the gender of clove is masculine. Its ruling planet is Jupiter. Its element is fire. Its powers is pr- are protection, love, money, and exorcism. So if anybody has an exorcism coming up and they need some clove, I got you. So... Because it um, is related to the mint family, which is also good for money and things like that, uh-huh. it's in Jupiter, you know. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Say that again for the people that didn't hear it the first <laughs> time. Because, come on. Huh? Because, say it again. Oh, because of Jupiter. That's his um, reigning plan- planet. Yeah. Is? It's Jupiter. And um, it's one of, like, the money planets. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So Jupiter is a money. Oh, wow. And I think Jupiter is about to go in retrograde. Don't quote me on that. I think Jupiter is either in retrograde or it's about to go in retrograde. So that's a trip and a half. And the magical uses for clove, uh, they're burning incense. They attract riches, drive away hostile and negative forces, produce spiritual vibrations, and purify the area. Cloves are burned as an incense to stop others from gossiping about you. I see y'all in the back. Don't maybe get that clove. And they're worn or carried to attract the opposite sex and bring... Oh, that's why you guys have clothes back there. Worn or carried to attract the opposite sex and bring comfort to the bereaved. Didn't you say your family was uh, Creole? Yes, we are. <laughs> Y'all better listen to this girl. Y'all better right listen to this. All uh, right. So we are... An ex- we, we got a couple segments. Yes, I'm, I'm very, very Creole. I, I've learned more about black my black indigenous uh, roots as well as uh, hoodoo. I, I did take a, fond, um, a fascination and a fondness for hoodoo because that was demonized by the catholic church nonetheless i was raised catholic so that, really? that's another story i wanted to be a nun when i was younger um that's another episode i'm not getting Whoa. into that yeah i wanted um, to be a nun didn't work interesting. out interesting didn't work yeah. out you guys. i grew up baptist and it's a whole it, different culture than it, what it I very it now. very much is i work at a baptist church now and it's very different but i appreciate the other appreciate the other denominations so i have a segment that we are premiering other than me saying buy my stuff is uh, uh what you should be reading what you should be growing okay So we are in zone 10. There's only three parts of the country, the United States, that are in zone 10, and those are the hottest regions, tropical-like, for growing food. So three states actually have it. Texas, if if you want. Somebody said Texas has one star on its flag because that's a review. Um, So we're going to talk about uh, Florida and California, our zone 10s, meaning that you can grow tropical fruit and grow fruit year-round. We don't have a hardiness, a deep, deep flavor to uh, zone 2A hardiness where they literally have to dig their food out of the snow. So people, please take advantage of the fact that we can grow food year round. We can grow pineapples, we can grow mangoes, and we don't have to depend on imports. We can grow bananas. Okay, so what should you be growing? We're in Los yes. Angeles, right? We so what do I have? 10B. Bam, I'll lace you, i lace you, I got you. <laughs> you guys should be growing okra. Let me tell you why you should be growing okra. First of all, when any type of natural hair care product comes out, it just has the black community in a chokehold and I don't blame you because we have some of the most amazing hair in existence okay so okra does have beneficial properties when it comes to hair it helps with repair it's full of vitamin k and also vitamin c and folic acid and minerals and another thing is okra is incredibly easy to grow all you have to do is soak the seeds for about two days and you can have a whole okra plant for as tall as six feet and it turns out if you overgrow your okra don't cry because I've done it many times you guys would not believe how many plants I kill a year two thousand um, but I grow 10,000. See, I keep my weight up. I keep my yeah. weight up. Okay. Um, so don't worry about it. This is actually an overgrown. I don't know if you can hear that. 
That so was the first thing I did. I picked it up you and shook it. it. Yeah, so you could actually overgrow <laughs> it and dry it. And every time you split open a pod, you get more seeds. There's seeds in there. I don't want to split this one because they're going to fall over the table. So you get more seeds and try it again. So if your stuff overgrows and dies, actually save it. You can compost it and brush yourself off. Oh, I can't do Wait. that for the licensing. You guys, come on. Wait. You got to get me on that Have you heard yeah, about spanking your okra? Spanking it. Yes. It's a thing on Instagram right now that spanking your okra what plant. What y'all got going on? What? No, it's supposed to spanking put out it. Um, a higher yield. So I was like, oh, next year I have to do it because this year I'm not growing okra. Smack that. See, I keep trying to sing and I'm going to get hit with copyright. Akon doesn't play. Him and his eight wives are coming for me. <laughs> Smack that okra. That's really have eight wives. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. That man bought up a bunch, a chunk of Africa. We're not going to talk about. Um, and he has poly eight wives. Because that's. If, uh, okay, if the poly. Don't open the poly, up that. Uh, okay, okay. It, everybody's not ready for poly. You. In my opinion, on you the Plant Plug podcast, <laughs> everybody's not ready for poly, as well as there's certain practices and people forget permit promiscuity and polyamory are two different things yes. so if you want to be booting and scooting and backsliding from jesus on a daily basis then go be pr promiscuous we don't have a problem with that you know that's what i'm telling you but it polyamory literally the breakdown means love it's multiple love amory means love poly means multi people just break it down stop making it complicated stop doing all that everybody's not ready for polyamory and you don't know until you see somebody that you like talking to somebody else if you can hang if you can't hang then you're a monogamous person no shame in that but if you if you want to be over if, if you no no i'm gonna stop because we're running out of time but anyways you guys should be growing this okra okra i highly recommend it it's very container friendly some people don't like the sliminess but it, the actually the viscosity of that's the ter that's the term the viscosity mm. of the okra that people don't like is actually great for thickening soups and sauces it really is it, it is and it's super like i said and it's also these ones are soup kind of thickener. this one is regular okra covered in clay because it said that clay actually aids in popping your seeds and germinating another thing is this is a big okra these can be as long as six inches a piece that is not six inches i'm sorry who's to whoever son this is this is three inches. Um, and then uh, we have the Baby Buddha Hybrid. I just got my hands on some Louisiana and some burgundy okra, and it's going down. The plug is going to have okra. I'm going to open up. I'm actually starting this thing where I'm going to open up my garden for people to come with a basket and fill it up on the spot. Yes. So while I'm teaching you, you're shopping. So you plant, they pick. Yes. Yes. And I got a little bit of everything. And we also got the chicken girls, the chicken home girls. Um, I have the, uh, and then we can get you some eggs. I'm really, really excited. Some eggs from you. Yes. I love eggs. I, I love eggs. I, I love that you were on the show. I know everyone is so anti-egg right now, but I don't care. You got to care for the chicken babies. Yes. I don't, I don't, we don't breed chickens. Um, people, there. it's like I having dogs chickens. or puppies. Uh, I want all and also, the animals. I, yeah, you sure do. We're going to get you all <laughs> the animals. We're going to go to the I fair. I want all the animals. We're going to go to the okay. fair and get you a goat. And I got to have you goat. back when we do the uh, Black Female Farmer Roundtable. I'm okay. really planning that. We're going to have all our my local lovely ladies, femmes, on the table talking about urban farming um, as a black woman. And this is another thing. This is what you should be reading. This is a children's book. Oh. Don't let the age specifications stop you. Like, I'd be reading it. My eye, look at that big old print. My eyes are like, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is a book. It's actually a series from National That's Geographic. It's level one. It's super easy. It's a very short read about George Washington Carver. Did you know this man did not invent peanut butter, y'all? He did not. He was a botanist and he fat, he studied plants. And the reason why his name is George Washington Carver, he's actually named after an area, not because his parents had slave names. Mm. African-American slavery. I know people don't like using the word slaves when referring to that period. I understand. I'm still learning, y'all. Don't come for me. But if you do come for me, leave a like and a comment and a subscribe. Enslaved. Right? Enslaved, enslaved people. Enslaved. I understand. I get it. I understand. It's Did okay. you know I'm a slave for you was originally meant for Janet Jackson? Hmm. I wonder why she declined. Anyways, so yeah, George Washington Carver, get your learn on and learn more because knowledge is power. And you can... This is what man really, really set the standard for black botanists out there. So um, that's for you, for the children. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Okay. And when it rains, it pours. So another thing that we try to implement, the word of the day, everybody, is... What's the word of the day? Guess. Starts Guess. with B. B? Botanist? Ooh, close. What? Come on. Um, we got one more, one more, one bees? more. You're so close. It's on your card. It's on your cue card. It's on your cue card. Bartering. Yes, yes. it is, everybody. <laughs> so I have another gift for you. The Plant Plug now have for these shirts. It's called Barter is Beautiful. You're spoiling it's gonna, me. I can't <laughs> help it. 
and you know when you get a fresh fresh shirt it smells like vinegar i thought i had an accident i love vinegar it's It's weird i I know a fresh fresh shirt smells like smells like accident sorry a fresh fresh shirt smells like vinegar y'all this shirt is for you it's a medium cut it up make it look cute remember back okay first of all Remember back in the day when the girls used to have the little fits and they would cut up their shirts and they had the one of the shirt cutters. Come on, yeah. where'd y'all go? I was a shirt. What cutter happened? For sure. Where'd y'all go? You had the little barrettes matching the cut up shirt, and you had like the the, the beauty supply slides. You guys had it going on, but that's for you. I thank it. you. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, um, where can everybody find you? You said you're on Instagram. Do you have a website? So I do not have a website. Okay. Um, it's in the works. It's in the works. We're, we're working. We're working over here. We're um, planting seeds. But I do a lot of pop-ups, and um, you can DM me, and if you want to, if you want a candle or some herbs, you can see what I have. If that's something you're interested so in. So Harmony House, mm-hmm. and then also, um, I know you know some people at Compton Cowboys. We didn't mention that at all, which is great. And then I, I love the Compton Cowboys. They give me so <laughs> much hope. My mom is like the Compton Cowboys. And also, I know that you are doing the mm-hmm. the junior questions as well, and everybody can find all three of those things on Instagram. I want to thank, thank you for you. being on my show. Thank I you. really appreciate y'all. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please listen. I'm not on SoundCloud. I was about to say that. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I am on Anchor FM. We're also on Apple Podcasts. You're going to be on Apple Podcasts. Tell Amazing. somebody. I'll print it out on a certificate and make a little trophy. We'll, we'll, we'll party. I need to go to a party really soon. And thank you, everybody, oh. for watching it. Yes, were you going to say something? Speaking of parties, yes. the Ghetto Gauntlet. Ghetto the, Gauntlet? Yes. Wrestlers in Compton, duking it out. What day? Fundraiser, August 28th. I'll send you the link. A ghetto gauntlet with wrestlers. Say less. What? I, I know everybody was into wrestling because yeah, if I was. I was into wrestling, come yeah. on. Yeah, come on. so we're gonna we're gonna we're in gonna Compton. put that we're gonna definitely yeah. list that up, and I want to thank everybody else for watching the uh, the plan. I was gonna say the Compton podcast. Thank you so much for having <laughs> Compton podcast. Well, you know, might as well, might as well, might as well. <laughs> but thank you everybody for watching. Uh, check out Innovative Culture. Check out Harmony House. Thank and you. thank you for uh, following me. The Plant Plug on the Plant Plug podcast. I will catch you all later. Peace. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.